Part 3 Nehru Supported China China and India forge a friendship almost immediately after the founding of the People's Republic of China. The two have common grounds, being newly independent and the two most populous countries in Asia. The leader that spearheads their friendship, Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru. Sardar Patel, Nehru's deputy prime minister, wrote to his boss in 1950, outlining his belief that the Chinese occupation of Tibet spelled bad news for India. He said that with a, quote, militaristic and aggressive nation, close quote, on its border, India was under the threat of infiltration by communist spies and even invasion. Nehru conceded that India could do nothing to prevent China's, quote, liberation, close quote, of Tibet, and admitted the threat of gradual Chinese infiltration and annexation of border territories. However, he believed that in the ultimate analysis, quote, the real protection we India, should seek as some kind of understanding with China. Nehru was a whimsical internationalist who believed that the end of colonialism heralded a new enlightened world order. He saw India as being at the vanguard of an international movement that would abide by pan the five principles of peaceful coexistence. The first time these principles were codified in a treaty was in an agreement between China and India in April 1954. This treaty regarded trade and intercourse between Tibet and India and was the first official bilateral document that referred to Tibet as, quote, the Tibet region of China. Close quote. Concluding this treaty explicitly endorsed China's annexation of Tibet in 1951 as something which simply took place within Chinese territory. Tezpur in the northeast of India has become known all over the world for it was here that India received the Dalai Lama after his flight from Tibet. India offered the God King of Buddhism a safe refuge from the communist Chinese. To Tezpur flocked reporters representing the press of all the free world. By jeeps, the God King and his entourage traveled the last stage of their perilous 300 mile journey. No one could have told from his unruffled bearing as he was greeted by high Indian officials and presented with the white scarf, token of friendship, that the Dalai Lama had been in mortal danger since he left Lhasa. The 23-year-old spiritual head of the 500 million Buddhists throughout the Far East confirmed that he had been forced to leave his capital. In 1959, months after the Dalai Lama had fled into exile, Nehru disparaged the voices calling for the government of India to challenge the Chinese. He commented to the Indian ambassador in Beijing that, quote, the opposition were saying hard things about China chiefly to embarrass our government, close quote. In a speech to Parliament on May 8, Nehru seemed to endorse the Chinese actions which had caused the Dalai Lama to flee. Quote, where a society has existed for hundreds and hundreds of years, it may have outlasted its utility. Nehru was speaking about the Tibetan society that the Chinese were in the process of systematically destroying. Any 
kind of a forcible uprooting of that must be necessarily painful, whether it is a good society or a bad society. Close quote. Throughout the struggle for independence, Nehru had often spoken of his desire to integrate India's struggle against the British imperialists with the global struggle against imperialism and colonialism in general. And Mao, who included a rant against the Western imperialists in almost every second sentence, Nehru appeared to have met an angry but natural ally. He was reluctant to let an issue like Tibet, which he viewed as a backward feudal state in need of reform, break his anti-imperialist coalition with the Chinese.